Five steps how you can run your business on eBay. And these are five steps that I use all the time. Could any of them fit your model? Just finish a transaction of buying these three expensive tablets that I'm going to turn around and flip them for almost three grand. This is actually one of the steps of this video. Let me explain one by one what I mean when I say five steps to reselling on eBay. All right, guys, this is a question that I get asked all the time. Very popular question. Lots of people, I think, want to know, especially people that are starting the business, even the people that have been in the business for a while, and they still don't have a full grasp how reselling on eBay and reselling in general works are very interesting in this topic. Here's the five steps that I use in my business to do what I do at the level that I do it. I got a little cheat sheet here that I'm gonna read off. These are the five steps that my business constantly involves about. Number one, selling vintage stuff number two bulk liquidation number three expensive commodity stuff number four wholesale and number five cheap reselling i'm going to get into these one by one and explain what i mean in every one of them and what it takes to sell in every single category that i just mentioned here pay attention because this actually could change and put you in the right direction what you want to do in your reselling business. This is mainly designed to resell at eBay levels, not so much Amazon, mainly eBay and a little bit of local game. Far as I know, I'm really the only one person that uses all these five categories to stay in a reselling game. I really don't know anybody else who uses all five. Um, so I believe I have quite a bit of experience that I can talk about this and shed some light on it. So number one, selling vintage. It is a most exciting category to be in, at least for me. I love doing research, finding new cool stuff from electronics to toys. I mean, there's so, and, you know, even clothing, there's so much out there when it comes to vintage. It's a very exciting category to be in. Now, here's the tricky part about vintage. If you do want to sell vintage, first you need to locate you need to locate your sources. Where are you going to get all this vintage stuff? Is it going to be flea markets? Are you going to find this at garage sales or estate sales? Are you going to have, you know, um, antique malls that you're going to go to? or any context that you're going to create over a certain period of time with people they can supply you with this kind of stuff it's tricky depending where are you located but most of most of the uh, areas especially around us you can buy vintage all day long so even if you are in a, v a smaller populated areas you know not big metropolitan cities like i am in chicago you can still find all this stuff here's what's extremely tricky about selling vintage you have to have a lot of it a lot of it will sell for good money but it will not sell very quickly these will be all long tail items and when I say long term, you might be waiting three, four, six months, a year, sometimes two years for the right buyer to come along and buy your product. So what does that mean? That means you have to have big inventory. You can't have three, four hundred items. You have to have thousands. And I mean thousands, five thousand, eight thousand, ten thousand items, because only few of them are going to sell daily. And for you to make a living out of this, you have to have a big selection in few good niches to be profitable. So it is number one because it's the most exciting for me, the category to be in. But it's one of those categories that you really have to have a lot of inventory and it's going to take you a very long time to build it up to that level. So it takes time. Uh, it could be very profitable and very rewarding. 
All right, number two. Number two is bulk liquidation. And actually, matter of fact, as I'm recording this video in a few minutes, I'm going to be meeting with Alex and doing a bulk buy, which I'll show at the end of this clip. When I say bulk liquidation, I'm talking about items that you can buy that companies are liquidating in big amounts. So if somebody's going out of business and let's say it's got 300 items of this particular SKU that he wants to unload or some kind of factory is you know starting a new product line and they're selling their old one and they have 500 of that particular SKU they want to unload that's what I'm talking about that's exactly what I'm going to be doing right now with Alex I'm picking up a pallet of first aid uh, boxes there are metal boxes that I'm buying from him for you know pennies on a dollar and it's going to be a whole pallet hopefully i can fit it to my truck this is what i mean about bulk buying now here's this could be a very lucrative business guys um actually probably one of the best you can be in it in a whole reselling game here's the tricky part you need extreme amount of capital to do this kind of business and you need a lots of space as well because just to give you an idea, I'm buying 150 items, one pallet from Alex. There it is. What's going What's on, up? Pete? How's it going? Got it all ready, huh? Yep. Beautiful. All ready for you. Let's load it. Load it to the brim. Thanks, Alex. Appreciate it again. No problem, Pete. That I'm going to store it in my warehouse and it's going to probably take a year to unload. So you need space. And at the same time, even though that I'm buying cheap, I'm buying a lot of it, so my money is tied up for it. Yes, this particular item is going to sell once or twice a week, but it's going to take me a year to, you know, unload everything. I will recoup my money probably within three or four months, but it's still capital that it's tied up for a few months and you need a lots of space very lucrative if you can get your connections over a years and deal with this kind of product you will make a lot of money is it super exciting uh, not so much but it is very lucrative so what is number three number three is buying expensive commodities so just like i showed you at the beginning of the video that i bought these three expensive tablets uh, that I'm going to flip for $900 a piece. That's what I mean when I say expensive commodities. Stuff that you have to have quite a bit of money as well. But you could liquidate extremely quickly. But for a lot smaller margins. Right? So you could be paying, you know, three, four $400 to sell for six, $700. Or you're going to be paying $1,000 to flip it for $1,500. Right? The, it's not that something that you bought for a buck and you sold for 20 totally opposite you have to have a lot of capital to play that game yes it is very rewarding you can be in couple niches um you know you know i have a couple friends that sell extremely expensive stuff and play that game you know i got a guy who just deals with expensive watches and he only sells you know two or three a month i got another guy who plays just with vintage musical instruments that he really pays up for it you know pays four thousand five six thousand dollars a unit and he only sells one or two a month and he does make you know four or five thousand dollar profit on each but you don't have to go that extreme but these are the items they're expensive uh let's say if you buy an iphone 10 right now for 250 dollars you know that immediately you can flip that phone within one day for 400 dollars, right but you need to invest more um the turnaround is really quick but it's a game that you really have have to have a little bit of capital but it allows you to do this if you don't have lots of space and you want to move stuff quickly a camera that i'm recording right now with the canon 70d if i can buy this camera out in a wild let's say you know for 300 dollars, i can still easily flip that camera instantly like listing right now on ebay and within three hours it's gonna sell for 475 did i make huge money no probably about 130 dollars i made quick profit 
but it's turning around that money so this is number three model it's not for everybody you have to have a little bit of capital to play that game let's go to number four so what is number four i think number four lots of people are, don't understand this category at, at all and it is a wholesale 90% of the time to get into the wholesale game, you have to have, like me, brick and mortar situation that you can buy stuff. Not necessarily, but at least a warehouse, a reselling license. Lots of these companies won't deal with you unless have all this stuff in place. Now, here's very tricky part about wholesale. And the biggest hurdle that people have is that it requires a lots of capital what lots of space and the margins are extremely small um, can you make money absolutely but you gotta have a lot of money and a lot of space i mean if you're gonna be buying in volume big amounts and you have 100 SKUs, you need a big warehouse to move this product yes you're gonna only make you know 10 15 20 percent 30 percent tops if you're lucky most of wholesale reselling online since it's extremely competitive if you're making 15 percent, i think it's a good return so it's a hard game to play and for most people not doable uh it requires a lots of capital and especially requires having i'm not talking about drop shipping forget that category i'm not going to even mention because i know a lot of people are going to say right away well i can do drop shipping that's like wholesale no it's not retail arbitrage those are totally different i'm talking true wholesale that you have established either with distributor or or directly with a company or manufacturer and you're buying you know fifteen thousand of that product eight thousand of that product three thousand of that product it's getting delivered to you and you are reselling at very small margins is it exciting no is it profitable if you have a lot of money it could be very profitable most of the time this will be a big operation um is this something that i want to pursue no but we do it we do it quite a bit in my business uh we have a good mixture of everything that i'm talking about here but is it something that i would like to do all the time hell no it's super boring it's not rewarding it's just about that little percentage of money that you can make in a big big picture so let's get into number five all right what is number five number five is what i call cheap reselling and <laughs> what's cheap reselling not not because it's it's it, it's cheap stuff that you're reselling i'm saying cheap reselling because it's relatively cheap to get into and anybody can do it and that you know what falls in this category it's selling a little bit of everything but getting the items extremely cheap that means you're going to thrift stores you're going to a sale sale garage sales flea markets you buying off facebook marketplace things like that that you're looking really for those cheap deals you buying something for three you flipping for 25 you buying for 50 cents you flipping for 12 dollars plenty of stuff like that out there now here's the problem with this model to turn this model to like extremely profitable venture it's very hard to do because the return overall comparing to how much time you have to put in is not there can you make a living on it sure you can but you're going to be working a lot don't get me wrong you're going to be working a lot with any of these but this particular number five cheap reselling uh a point on this list it's going to be hard to do especially when you are by yourself and the returns are not the greatest why because for example if you go through a thrift store and you find something for three bucks that you can flip it for 30 it's a most common ratio most people that sell at the garage sales and, and at the thrift stores they're willing to donate that stuff that it's worth 20 30 40 at the most 50 dollars anything above that they really start seeing a little bit of value in it and they probably will resell on their own now things that are underneath that 50 dollars they're willing to give it away to donation put it on a garage sale table you know sell it for a few pennies because they just don't want to deal with it and that's when we come in and we scoop this stuff up that's why i call this cheap reselling you pick it up cheap 
and you resell it most of the time your average selling price on something like this will be 20 30 40 dollars so anybody can get into this here's here's what's beautiful about number five when you start doing this cheap reselling you can slowly branch out and start doing a little bit different stuff with it Maybe you can pick up a vintage category that you like doubling in it. The number five keeps you going and it's that bread and butter, but all of a sudden you're selling some, you know, vintage toys that you're concentrating on it and you're building that, you know, revenue, which is number one on my list. And then you start buying, let's say, vinyl records or you're buying, you know, so you can branch out from the number five to different things. Or all of a sudden, maybe you can, you make a couple connections and you slowly, you got enough business in your number five that you can branch out to number two, bulk liquidation. You can start buying things and, and you know, so what's beautiful about this list that you can slowly, slowly grow it, that eventually you might be implementing all of this in your reselling business. That's what I do. All these five that I just listed here, that's what I do every single day. I do vintage, I do bulk buying, I do expensive, I do wholesale, and I do cheap. I mix it all up, and one big bowl is this one big pie that you can cut up and you could see, you know, where the money is coming in. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and it gave you a shed some light a little bit how I do things and what's out there and what's possible what do you need to do to be in a certain category all of this will require hard work none of this is just easy money there is no such thing just play with it just play with it figure out where you fall in what interests you what excites you it all takes work all right, guys, that's why I call this video five ways to sell on eBay. You can pick your own way, uh, which suits you best. Probably number five is the easiest one to get in and you can slowly branch out. If you did enjoy this type of video, this kind of information that I'm sharing, please give it a thumb up, share it with your friend. Uh, if you stumbled for the first time on my content, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you get informed every time the video goes out there. And uh, I really appreciate you guys watching. Thank you, till next time, cheers.